Hello, this is Sean from DeRosa Education and Research. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Fourier transform on R. I'm going to go over two reasons why studying the Fourier transform can be difficult and how to make it easier. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss future videos on advanced mathematics. Even though it sounds advanced, the definition of the Fourier transform is relatively straightforward. You take a function, multiply it by something, then integrate. If the original function is really nice, you might even be able to evaluate the integral. Of course, if the original function is a jerk, you may not be able to evaluate the integral, or even worse, the integral may not exist. After you have defined the Fourier transform, the next thing to do is study some of its properties. This is a point where it is easy to get lost. The problem is the Fourier transform has a lot of properties and it can be difficult to keep track of all of them. You will hear things like the Fourier transform is bounded, it is linear, it turns convolutions into products, it is an isometry on L2, and it is a Fourier inversion formula. While it is easy to get overwhelmed, the key is to remember a lot of these results of simple proofs that take less than three lines to write and follow directly from the definition. This means you can learn many of these results by proving them yourself. It also helps to think of these basic results as tools you will use later to prove more complicated results. The next place where it is easy to get overwhelmed is dealing with a lot of different function spaces. The main ones when you study the Fourier transform are L1, L2, L infinity, C infinity compact support, and the Schwartz space. The key thing to remember when dealing with these different function spaces is at the end of the day you are still dealing with functions. If you are comfortable with vector spaces from a linear algebra course, you can think of these function spaces as vector spaces. Indeed, all the spaces mentioned are infinite dimensional vector spaces. It also helps to have the following overview of why you study these different function spaces. L1 is a space of absolutely integrable functions. This is the natural space where you want to apply the Fourier transform. It is a good starting space because the Fourier transform is perfectly well defined here, i.e. if a function is in L1, its Fourier transform will exist. When you apply the Fourier transform to a function in L1, the result is a function that is bounded. The space of essentially bounded functions is called L infinity, so the Fourier transform sends L1 to L infinity. L2 is a space of square integrable functions. This is a really nice space because it is a Hilbert space. As a result, the space has its own notion of a dot product. The Fourier transform has a lot of nice properties when applied to this space. For example, the Fourier transform sends L2 to itself. C infinity compact support is a space of functions that are infinitely differentiable and vanish outside some finite interval. Working with this space allows us to bring in notions of differentiability that were lacking in L1 and L2. Functions in this space are also useful for approximating functions in other spaces. When the Fourier transform acts on a function in this space, other than the zero function, it spreads it out, so the Fourier transform of the function is not in this space, i.e. the Fourier transform of this function does not vanish outside any finite interval. The Schwartz space is an enlargement of C-infinity compact support. Instead of requiring functions to vanish outside some finite interval, the Schwartz space only requires that functions and their derivatives tend to zero quickly. For example, the normal distribution is in the Schwartz space, but not in C-infinity compact support. Doing this means the Fourier transform sends the Schwartz space to itself, unlike C-infinity compact support, that doesn't get sent to itself by the Fourier transform. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment on what topics you'd like to see in the future, and remember to like, share, and subscribe.